Good morning, folks. Starting off with a good example of faking climate mitigation. Cap and trade can be spun in a nice way, but what happens if new plants open and vie for the same credits? And what stops the worst polluters from buying a disproportionate share of those credits? Nothing. Despite their claims to have a rover on Mars' surface, it's the satellites furthering the revelation that life on Earth is not special. And if you've liked my video, I am Harp, you may smile at this article. Quake depression began nicely, only had this five-pointer off the Chilean coastline yesterday. These do sometimes signal larger subduction quakes to come, however. Yesterday we reported the tornadoes in Portugal. You knew Spain couldn't be far behind that damage as they saw some wild wind and flooding of their own. Precipitation is likely along the cloud line next few days. Tropical cyclone number three formed in the northeast Indian Ocean yesterday. Will be headed for the subcontinent, but before she ever gets there, you remember the western side of cyclonic lows pull northern air down, and right now it's way colder than normal throughout most of India. Here's the intensity of that storm. Australian thunderstorms have been bad enough to knock out power in the far north, staying on the upper edge of that pressure boundary for thunderstorm watches to start the week. As you can see on the U.S. wind map, all the air except the far southeast is headed north for that huge triple basin low pressure system that the Weather Channel can go ahead and name any day now. Rain records in both Alaska and California, eh? Don't see that every day, but same can be said for that low pressure system. Lot of moisture, lot of cold air. The convergence is their battleground and the people below will feel it. Something interesting, this low is expected to concentrate and shoot across the northern states after pinching off. If that happens, it's going to be one hell of a storm. Moving to space weather really grinds my gears when there's cosmic ray or muon data missing. Oh well. Remember yesterday, the density of the solar wind was strongly elevated, causing multiple resonance inductions. Well, it's calm nicely now, and so has the induction magnetometer. Hope you learned something about this chart the last three days. Flaring activity has been low as well. Let's hope it stays that way until our footprint and magnetic connections aren't tied to potential eruption zones exclusively. The Earth-facing sunspots are pretty much sharing the magnetic connections to Earth right now. A flare facing us might cause radiation storms at high latitude, so we're on watch with Mercury set to heliocentrically conjoin Jupiter in two days. Looking at the active regions, the sunspots up north are really the more dangerous ones. Going from left to right, we see little spots extended nicely with alternating magnetics. The central region has a smaller set above it and a potential delta spot trying to form in the center. For contrast to the first group, lots of little spots here, but the magnetics are easily separated left and right, meaning it's less dangerous. Two overnight eruptions, both small, this first one from the northeastern region and luckily headed away from Earth. We had another one just west of center. This now makes three little CMEs on the way, a potential glancing blow from that big one yesterday. We have a week until December kicks off with a bang. I'll show the diagrams for these tomorrow. Eyes open, no fear, it's 5.38 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.